<laughs> hey, you know, better call this your bloody stupid ass. No, no, look, look, what, what am I going to sing? Shut up, you. <laughs> Everything is recorded. What am I supposed to sing? <coughs> Shut up, you. 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 بسد ادب درخواست کرتے ہیں کہ آپ للہ ہم سب سے کرم فرمائیں اور ایک ٹپا سنائیں حضور کرم فرمانے سے پہلے آپ کا کیا وہ کیا بول رہے ہیں جی عزم شریف کیا ہوتا نام Of my life. Now, don't touch anything, please. Would you please put a hand down? Because if you do that, you will sing about tape recording which I don't like. Because you'll stop my tape recording. Tape recording is my love, is my work, is my life. Don't worry, nothing. Cool. No, if I say, nahi roke ya, so you tape recorder, nahi roke ya. Shabda. You, <coughs> you can't say anything. This is recording, I know. It has taken me over 30 years to go on this journey, Papa. When you passed away, they asked me to say my last goodbyes to you. But instead, I went to see a film in the theatre with my friends that day. I thought a chapter had ended. A traumatic chapter that would fade away with time. But do we have the choice really to forget? Strange loud music mixes with my dream. Eyes open, I awaken to my reality. The music persists. I follow the source, stand outside his studio door. The red light above cautions me not to knock or peer inside. Fearful, I recoil. This was my papa as I knew him. Or did not know. For the first 14 years of my life, I had to travel to another I continent, Papa, 7,000 miles away from home, before I was ready to face you again. Without realizing it, I've been searching for you all my life, in my work, in my relationships. I know this now. My mother would burst into tears at the very mention of your name. So we never talked about you, as if you had never existed. 
I felt it was time now to ask her a few things. तो अभी तक मुझे याद आती है उनकी जितनी गलतियाँ थी जिंदगी में माफिया मांगते रहे वो मुझे भूल गई हैं मगर उनकी याद नहीं भूली अभी तक बहुत अच्छी अच्छी बातें करते थे हंसाते बहुत थे बड़े इंटेलिजेंट थे तेरे पापा ने मुझे बोलना था कि आई लव यू एंड शादी करना चाहता हूँ तो वो दस दफा मुझे मिले बाहर मगर एक दफा बोल नहीं सके और मुझे मालूम था यही पूछ रहे और फिर बाद में एक दिन कहते कि अगर शादी करनी हुई तो मेरे साथ क्या मैंने कहा नहीं मेरे को शादी करनी थी मेरी फैमिली शादी के बिल्कुल अगेंस्ट थी वो कहती है कहाँ शादी कर रही है ना खाता है ना कमाता है ना कुछ करता है खुद में रहता है तो मैं कहती थी कि गरीब है तो क्या हो गया खुद में रहता तो मैं भी खुद में रह लूँगी तो वो हंसते थे पागल लड़की है फिर प्यार हो गया तभी तभी तो शादी की प्यार नहीं होता शादी क्यों करती हाँ करते थे उनका तरीका और टाइप का था करते तो बहुत थे रात को कभी दो बजे आए तुम्हें उठाते थे तुम बोलते थे तुमको खुद काम करना चाहिए तुम भी एक बनना कुछ तुमको कोई पैसों की जरूरत नहीं तुम कुछ बनेगी तुम आधी नींद में होती थी ऐसा हाथ सर लाती रहती थी और सो जाती थी उनका यही प्यार था क्योंकि कई आदमी कई लड़के कई लोग फालतू आते थे घर पे फालतू बातें होती रहती थी तू लड़की थी मैं यंग लड़की की वजह से मैं दूर दूर ही रखती थी मैं क्या कोई ऐसी फालतू बातें ना सीखे कोई ऐसी बातें ना करे What was that red light all about? Only when I was working. But the light used to stay on most of the time, especially at night. That's because I worked mostly in the night, all night. Working or drinking? Don't look at me like that. I never had the courage before. Now that you're gone, there's so much I need to tell you about me, how I feel. I know how you feel. I'm sorry. Your work came between us. No, your mother. मुझे जो बचपन की मेमोरीज हैं मम्मी अच्छी नहीं मतलब गाली गलोच जोर से बोलना ये नहीं बात करनी I returned to Bombay, the city that was our home. 
I had questions buzzing in my head and a camera in my hand. It was important for me to talk to all your old friends and meet all the people who knew you, even remotely. I wanted to fill the gaps in my memory while there was still time. That's my meter. That's, yeah, I know. That's good. Yeah, that's good. It's good. It's okay. I'm fine. What? The film is going well? Yeah. <laughs> so that's... No, I'm, I'm telling everyone. I'm telling everyone. This is Shabnam. If you haven't met her before in the film, <laughs> this is Shabnam, my dear friend Sukhdev's and Kanta's daughter. She used to be that small, that small, when it was the time of which we spoke, right? Yeah. And her father was my best friend. And I like to think I was his best friend. Do din jina. Do din kat jina. Do din kat jina. Ta jina tord. Par jina tord dena. Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know how it goes, but I remember him singing it. one room in the house where everyone was working, all his camera crew, the editing staff. And I thought all this is eventually going to eat into the domestic side of life. There were occasions where he recorded a commentary in the dead of night, you know. So for him, everything was mixed, intermixed. Work and play went together, which they shouldn't normally. But for him, it was all integral to being what he was. Puffy. I was very keen to talk to all the people um, who have been associated with me and I've been here a long time. It's taken you a long time to realize this. Yeah. <laughs> I knew him when I was in school. I think he was in Don Bosco. And uh, I was junior to him at that time. Then I lost track of him, which later on I was told that he was working at Quatras as a chauffeur, come helper, come assistant, come everything. The Quatra brothers had a, quite an established uh, film company at that time. In 1965, I was asked to do a film with him. And I had just done a voiceover for the documentary that he'd done. But I was also quite new into, into the profession. I was grateful that he was selecting me. And it was a time when I was not uh, popular with the big filmmaker. But what was the experience working with him? Well, I enjoyed working with him. He, I think he was one of the original fellows who did exactly what they, he wanted to, mm. which turned out to be opposite of what you expected him to do. Mm. But uh, he was a good soul. My wife liked him very much. Mm. No, but Uncle, tell me. I want you to tell me something about him because I know he was a good filmmaker and all that. Yeah. But I want to know from you your experience in knowing him and... Well, I always, I always enjoyed working with him. Mm. It was always a pleasure, you know. And then after pack up in the evening, we used to enjoy drinking whiskey together. <laughs> I, I remember now when I first met Sukhdev, he was working for Art Films of Asia which was run by Paul Zill, the German film director and producer. And the cameraman was Pali Billy Moria. Okay. And Sukhdev used to work for both of them. I was interested in meeting people, 
talking, discussing things. Mm. We used to meet in the evening and we used to drink and talk. I remember your voice. I mean, I see those films, I recognize your voice instantly. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, it's a long time ago. <laughs> रोशनी मर गई ये अपनी कांता कैफी के पास लेकर आई और बोली कि वो बहुत जीनियस आदमी है कैफी साहब आप उसको काम दिलाइए क्योंकि मैं उससे शादी करना चाहती हूँ तो कैफी ने जब तक उन्होंने अच्छी तरह सुखदेव को देखा नहीं था मगर उन्होंने कहा हाँ कर लो अगर तुम समझती हो जहीन आदमी है मगर बाद में पता चला कि वाकई वो बेहद इंटेलिजेंट लड़का था और इंतहाई मोहब्बत का और मतलब कैफी के ऊपर तो वो जैसे जान छिड़कता था और इतना जीनियस था कि ईशान आर्य जो उसका कैमरा मैन था वो उसकी तस्वीर हमेशा अपने वॉलेट में रखता था मतलब इतना प्यार इतनी मोहब्बत के कुछ हद में गाड़ी बहुत तेज चलाते थे तो उससे मैं बहुत डरती थी Perfect, a dynamo, energy, energy. Go to biryani, one wouldn't go around the corner. He would want to drive to Pune for biryani. Which has been done many times. I used to always wonder whether he really uh, ever thought about me or cared for me. That's he did. He. Was very keen on your achieving something academic, because he felt he'd missed out on that. He was totally self-taught. Yeah, it's like once he got me a whole bunch of books. Yeah, I remember him sort of read, yeah. and I, I I didn't even want to touch a single book because I was so angry. I said, "What does he mean by that?" You know, I was very closed. My mind was very closed. I was very angry all the time with him. You must respect him because he came from that sort of background, and he always had to, in the beginning, at least prove himself and fight for whatever he got. The mind is weak, scarred in me. I am the weaker than them. It was just a very dynamic time for us, and I feel very privileged to have been part of it. I was working at Lintas. Uh, you know, everybody there was also creative, very involved. Sham Benegal had joined. Other people were there with us, and uh, it was at that film and Anandam. We had started Anandam uh, Film Society, so we were part of a, a move, film movement, and we used to meet all the time and watch the latest, latest films coming out. I remember going to his house. We just kept dropping into each other's homes. Your father's home, most of all, I think. I just remember your mother's being very quiet, very submissive, and probably not at all a part of what we were doing. Maybe a bit disapproving because there was a lot of drinking and wildness, which was at that time. I mean, it was really wild, uh, and I think she suffered because you know she had to cook, she had to you know be the hostess of something she probably did not enjoy very much. We all spent time together. Sukhadai, Srinivas Chari, Pradhaf Sharma, Jagmohan. Passionate involvement in anything we did. In anything. Did. Anything we did. Believe me. Bangladesh, 71. He goes to Bangladesh war and he goes and in uniform. He takes my dark glasses. He says, hey, I want to take it. Every time he used to put the glasses here while shooting and and he was in uniform in a trench, and uh, he the glasses fell. He told me, and he went down to pick up the glasses. That's how he was saved. Otherwise, the bullets would have gone. And as he went down, and the brrr, bullets went. If I'm in town on the way back, we stop at that Ramnod ke piche bata ta wada famous. Or wo gali se Sukhdev ka ghar is like. I used to get to make those holdings, amul butter holdings. So I got a lot of money to work. But there was no place to work. So I told him that he was a man. He said, what do you do with my compound? Do you do it? 
Yeah, I don't know what is friendship. I don't know what is love. I don't know what, what is the relationship or something like that. But one thing is there that we were very close to each other. एक दूसरे को देखते हैं अजनबी हैं जानते नहीं मगर नज़दीक आ जाते हैं फ़ौरन दिस इज अ थिंग ऑफ लव मोहब्बत यही चीज़ है तो ये कुछ ऐसा कनेक्शन उससे हुआ because it was so long back it's been 30 years he's gone ha uh, you know and you still nee, talk I, with so much passion about him nee i i never miss him he is always with me ye mere ko nahi lagta i had come expecting to unearth some hard truths about you i didn't expect to find this the very mention of your name opened so many doors to me people's faces lit up with smiles and happy memories <laughs> this left me feeling even more distant from you your friends had a connection with you that i your daughter could never share i can imagine that you miss him ab main main miss nahi karta kyunki he is with me always and i have lived a life with him na you haven't lived a life You haven't lived a life. He didn't touch and, my life. Hmm. He didn't touch my life. Yeah. छोटे से थे. And he was always running. Yeah. He was always running. खिलौने वाला. खिलौने वाला आ गया आ गया I know around the time of the Kilone Wala and all that. I mean, he was doing all that for you. I mean, that was his way of telling a story for you. Kilone Wale, Kilone Wale, baad dinon pe kilone laaye, mile the humko bol ke baithe. Tum ab kyu holi pe kyu na aaye? Are bhai kaise aata? Dhoond raha tha apni khatir gudiya si ek dulhan. Duniya chhan. Dekh aaya पूरब पश्चिम उत्तर दक्षिण पूरब पश्चिम उत्तर दक्षिण दैट वॉज इंट एक्टिंग आई हैड एक्चुअली हर्ट माई सेल्फ दैट वॉज अ फेबुल टेक आई कुंट कट द कैमरा आई वॉज क्राइंग एंड यू स्क्रीम्ड asked me to get up and run i was in pain but too afraid of you you were too young to understand and you had no time to explain and no more raw stock you understand that now don't you i understand that but you needn't have been so harsh
ये डॉक्यूमेंट ये जो बुझा रहे थे ना तो कैसे पहले तो कैमरे में देख कैसा लगता है कौन सी डॉक्यूमेंट ये हिलाने वाला ये हिलाने वाला के टाइम की है वर्ली है ना वर्ली सी फेस में सब शूटिंग हो जरूरी थी तो लोगों के लिए खाना बना के लेके जाती थी फिर आती थी फिर मतलब बड़ा मैंने काम किया वो फिल्म टाइटल्स में लिखा है क्रेडिट आपको दिया ये तो शादी थी ये इसकी शादी की इच्छा भी लगी थी शूटिंग कर वो कहाँ है उसका कुछ पता है सही नहीं पता My association with him and his film was from the time he signed the contract to the time I drove him to the airport, spending the night in Verli, waking up in the morning, putting him in the car and dropping him at the airport. Started working in the capacity of assistant director. Also used to go with him for the editing and all. And then gradually, like the first time I went to shoot out of Bombay, he gave me over four track recorders, manual in my hand, and he said, Bombay to Delhi is 24 hours journey. I said, Archa, this could chart low, because day after when you start, we start shooting, all the effects you're recording, and mind you, I had not ever recorded before that. But he just gave it. It is your responsibility. The thing that was hammered into all of us at least, Work is worship. Forget eating, forget sleeping, everything. And he used to tell me, better calm Kuru. I calm karte karte marunga. And that's exactly what happened. The circle round him thrice and close your eyes. When he went away, it was like, uh, you know, a part of me died. For almost eight months, I had no desire to go to anybody. Because, you see, it took me a long time to understand with. Will anybody understand my style of working? You know? Because I had adopted from him. And every every first March or first October, I used to say, what kind of this two darshan? These people have forgotten one of one of the documentary filmmakers of this country. Nobody bothered to do a program on it. And I just couldn't gather enough courage to do it. You know, because there are so many good things personally as well as professionally to talk about this man. It's a, it was a never-ending story. Never-ending story. You want, to talk, you want to talk to me? Just please, can you give me five minutes? The night was dark. There were no stars in the sky. Then dawn came and brought to light more darkness.
not as uh, dramatic uh, or revolutionary as some of the films which came later. But maybe at that point, using title cards, doing away with commentary, because film division is, we can't think of a film without commentary. So the possibility of making films effective through visual connections. So I can see some other filmmakers following his style of, uh, you know, bang cutting and uh, something which is, um, uh, you know, not the usual run-of-the-mill way of smooth way of flowing things, you know. Some of the shots are very poetic, but some of them are, you know, you show the poverty and, uh, you know, the anger of the filmmaker comes out. So that is what is important, you know. You know, a person has a capacity to cry or even your eyes get filled up. That means that he man is very human. He is not just cold. I mean, a, even as a journalist or a... He is not just cold. He is not just an observer and so capturing uh, that on his camera. No, he was always very sensitive, very involved. And that what made him. Many times he used to burst out into uh, tears and cry like a mad fellow. He was always carrying something, always. And whatever he was carrying was always extremely heavy. And that is simply because he'd got so used to um, getting his own camera equipment on his own shoulders. Right, I, he, he could have really given that to his assistants. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think he derived this, this great pleasure in, in saying that I'm, I'm part of the working class. You know, let's, let's not forget that when he came to Bombay and when in 58 he founded his own company, the overall temper of even commercial movies in Bombay was a progressive left-wing kind of temper. This was the kind of milieu in which Sukhdev grew up. I think it was Amita Malik who called him a rebel with a cause. मैं तो क्या पूरा फिल्म डिवीजन उनको जानता था सुखदेव कंपाउंड के अंदर आए कि पीछे भीड़ लग जाती थी कि इस वक्त क्या कर रहे हो आप ही वाज अ रियल फिल्म मेकर और उनकी जो थिंकिंग थी इतनी जबरदस्त थी कि हम ये तो हम तो सब गवर्नमेंट सर्वेंट थे तो हमारे ऊपर कुछ रिस्ट्रिक्शंस वगैरह रहते थे but he was absolutely free, though he was making films for films division. This type of inspiration is very difficult to get in the office. But we got it, thanks to Sukhdeo. Generally, we were shown short documentaries before the features, you know, which were awful. You know, and really very little to do with the real India. Poverty, social uh, troubles, uh, cultural difficulties, um, caste difficulties. He saw all this, he saw the real India, and he wanted to put it down. And it wasn't very, I mean, he must have had a pretty good fight to do that until he became famous when they thought, well, we'd better let him go because he is Sukhdev after all. <laughs> But unless uh, a documentary film talks to people straight in the eye and tells them this is the problem, that even you're responsible for not solving it, and I think we, we would make a point. You mean uh, I have a choice to make films and release them without the government? 
I had heard of Sukhdev long before I met him because uh, a good friend of mine was Jean Bhavanagri. Jean had been lent, so to speak, by UNESCO to the government of India at the request of Mrs. Indira Gandhi. And one of his tasks was to overhaul the film's division. And John, when he returned from his assignment, was very excited about a group of uh, documentary filmmakers. These are very young people. Pramod Pati's name came, Shastri was there, Chari was there. And of course, the person he spoke to with a great deal of passion and enthusiasm was S. Sukhdev. And one of the reasons why he was so excited was uh, because John had very closely followed the making of Sukhdev's film, India 67. Let's say a million people. So you can make a film like Gangs of Vasapur or you can make a film like Aftar, which will be consumed by one million people over the weekend. That's the end of the film. Then there are other films which will be consumed by one million people over the next hundred years or few hundred years. And I think that is a more difficult work to make, and that is because that's a work that is beyond contemporary. It goes, and I think what India 67 does is that in this moment of madness or inspiration, he, India 67 becomes a transcendental work. the sense of romanticism has collapsed. There's a, there is a rise of an intense disenchantment that begins with Naxalwari and then eventually the 1971 Bangladesh war is in again a, a big moment of disenchantment with both the nation. And I think these various political situations happened. The state under the films division under Jean Bhavanagri became a little negotiable and Sukhdev is the first one who's able to almost in a very Punjabi way, he's able to almost like totally rupture inside. And he then opens up this whole space for other people and then they, they work together and then they produce this. I would think nine, the late 60 films are the most important films of the 8,000 films that FD has produced. <laughs> I think it's very important that now young people are making wonderful documentaries. They're moving all around, but they should know also the legacy and the past because it was not so easy in those days. Uh, the young people have a great opportunity because of the digital. The camera you're shooting, just imagine. In those days, we're all 35 or at the, at, the, at the most 16, all film, very expensive. So we try to make a independent film with a lot of effort, with great difficulties. But now there's an opportunity 
you just pick up a camera and make a documentary. But what you need to understand the spirit of Sudev, that it's not just capturing images, it's capturing your country, you have to understand your country, know your country. That is very, that's why he's very important. There was never any situation which he found impossible. There was never it can't be done situation with him. He would manage to do it one way or another. And that I think was his greatest quality. But I admired his photographic work a lot. I've never seen anybody's work, any handheld work as good as Sukhdev's. And Sukhdev did not use any other thing. He held the a reflex camera in his hand. He had very strong shoulders, you know, and then he used to, it was rock steady what he shot. You know, a lot of people used to say that Yaraboy shot really. Sukhdev Wala means both tight. Before that, be it a documentary or be it a feature film. In India, you wouldn't have seen anybody shot this much or this much. You know, directors were skeptical about it. Cameramen were shit scared about it. On the location, you, you create your own shot take. Then the use of zoom lens, the way he used to view, zap, you know, from a wide in no, within one feet, it goes straight to close up. Nobody used that. He used to cut on the table, you know, like taking five feet. Like Falke. Yeah, like Falke, you know, because that was the habit of those days, editors, you know, to gauging the whole thing and also following the rhythm. This much, okay, okay, okay. Eight frames, you put it. I, I've seen him editing. The shot still I remember is that um, the Rajasthan Palace, uh, he goes into and sees this uh, security guard old fellow, grey haired fellow, playing the Santur. And you know, he is perspiring and you can see that uh, sweat coming up to his nose. I think <laughs> that's a wonderful shot. And he keeps on harping on that particular shot, whether the, the, the drop will fall down or not, you know. There also he acts. He acts in the sense that he acts himself. You know, he goes to his uh, mother in the Punjab and uh, there is wonderful sequence where he spends some time with her and uh, so you see his uh, origins as a, a filmmaker and uh, you know he's interested in recording life you know as it is.
at this point of time when we are watching the films we find them iconic it's so relevant and so so um, kind of true to its time when they had captured those moments i'm very curious to know how they were critically looked at at that point of time at that time they thought this was a waste of money that this is especially in the case of uh, films not so much in sukhdev in the case of sukhdev's film it got caught in censor problems that one particular shot where this dog is peeing on the bicycle facing the ganpati was a shot they wanted to one of the shots that they wanted to remove and sukhdev did not want and eventually uh, through ashok mitra who was then uh, one of the minister's secretary that it reaches uh, indira gandhi and she saw the film and she said yeah this is perfect it should be shown without a cut but i think there was a lot of resistance these film these filmmakers i think these films filmmakers are important because they were making films in a space of intense resistance and these also preempt very brilliantly when you see bala saheb thakre it is almost like oh my god you know and he's preempting and then if you remember immediately after he cuts from the bala saheb thakre shot you have radioactivity he's just telling you guys things are going to get screwed up pretty badly and he does it in a brilliant way the the experimentation is not just in the formal and the visual and and the representational the practice itself is madness I was just wondering. Look, this man has a sense of humor, and then he is very sensitive to what is happening around. He is not just lost in what is shooting, you know. Yeah. So that observance, uh, which was there, is very interesting. But what happens to a man like that when it comes to his family? What happens to that sensitivity and to that care? I mean. So oh, you see, there are two different levels. He is in a totally different plane. I mean, marriage doesn't bring him to this level, you know. So he lives in his own world. So that doesn't gel well um, in, in in a family life, you know. It can be he might be hurtful to his wife, he might be hurtful to his children, <coughs> and what they expect, he may not be able to give. because he is in different world to par aise insaan ko fir shaadi nahi karni chahiye na hota nahi na shaadi kar lete hain When you passed away everybody told me that I had to carry forward your legacy your friends and even my mother wanted me to follow in your footsteps it was a burden that weighed me down how could i be what you were i joined film school hoping to shed the skin of my past i wanted my films to be different from yours nothing to do with reality at least that's what i thought this reason nahi pata chalta ki insaan khush hai ya dukhi cyrus tumhari neend bahut pakki hai didi raat ko mummy papa ke jhagdon ka main hi to ek gawa tha 
बंद दरवाजे के बाहर खड़ा रहकर पापा के गाली गलौज सुनता रहता घंटों चलती रहती है उनकी बकवास कभी कभी तो मैं वहीं सो जाता बाहर दरवाजे के एक मैं देख रही थी मेरे फादर की फिल्म और मेरी फिल्म एक साथ में पढ़ी थी इंडिया इधर ही होएगा। का प्रिंट है। क्या आपके आपके पिता जी का नाम है? आपके पिता जी मेरे को मालूम नहीं था। वो का मैन काम नहीं करते थे नहीं ना फिर भी उनको तो फिल्म है वो बाद में एक फोटोग्राफी की है चार साल पाँच साल के बाद मेरे जवाब में ये वाली फिल्म इंडिया सिक्सटी सेवन नहीं ना ये मायलो में सब किसके गाने हैं वो भी बोल सकता है मूड to finish it because the producers were bullying him all the time mm. and the knowing of they we he didn't get on very well with them sheron ke nazdeek chale jaate the hum log bolte kya kar rahe pagal ho gaya yaar ye ho ya ekdam ja rahe uske baad hum log to jeep mein jaate jeep se jump maar ke camera leke shuru ho jana that was in him we could stop it because the army under a इगरनेस होती है या वो आर्टिस्ट होता है ना तो वो चीज़ को अपनी आंखों से वहाँ पर देखता है उस चीज़ को फील करता है उस सोच को नहीं मालूम था कि मैं क्या कर रहा हूँ तो ये चीज़ उसमें शुरू से थी वी आर सीरियस अबाउट हिज प्रोफेशन और सपना ही टू बी ओवर प्रोफेशन हो जाता था यू नो ही वॉज ऑल्सो वन मैन आर्मी ही कुड डू एवरीथिंग हिमसेल्फ he didn't need to depend on anybody else that's what made him a very good documentarist unlike you know when he went into features where he had to depend on other people you know where he, he required to overtly communicate with others which i don't think he particularly liked to do he is nishma shiva nishma shiva ये 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 एक्टर है अमरीश अमरीश मैं ये ये कर क्या रहे आपको ऐसी जोक वैसी करती है You are a very good technician. You are a very good technician, but <laughs> I'm no good technician. So what? What are you talking about anyway? But don't make any film like my love. Yeah. Never. You have to. I, I'll do it. What bloody hell do you mean by? What do you mean? I. I don't think you're very crap. The bastard. I will come and bloody well do it for you. You try. Yes, I'll come and do it. Will you leave the rent to me? You. Will you ask me to come? Look, my ek nazar sunana chaara. Oh, 
रेशमा शेरा जो फिल्म थी वो डायरेक्ट कर रहे थे बेहतरीन फिल्म मेकर थे इसमें कोई शक नहीं और मैंने उसमें गाना भी बजाया मैं जयदेव से बैठ के उस म्यूज़िक के बारे में सोचते थे तू चंदा में चांद ने उसको मैंने बजाया और जयदेव को भी कहा कि राजस्थान का ही होता सुख से भी बात हुई फिर वो शूटिंग के लिए गए और सारी बातें मुझे मालूम और उन्होंने बताई थी मुझे और उनकी तरफ से वो फिल्म कंप्लीट थी लेकिन उसके बाद में कुछ गड़बड़ हो के उसका कुछ बदलाव किया गया नो बड़ी अंडरस्टूड वाई सुखदेव वो साइड लाइन एंड टुक ओवर दी इट वॉज ऑब्वियस बिकॉज आई ट्राई टू स्पीक टू सुखदेव एंड ही डिट वॉन्ट टू टॉक मच अबाउट इट यू सी दू वाई डेंट यू आस्क द प्रोड्यूसर डायरेक्टर हिम सेल्फ यू नो ही माई he might have a, a better explanation to give but i don't know why i i went out of it because I, if i was doing the film you know, i would do it the way i do it so i think he was right in saying that and that's how I felt that you know he these people are brilliant uh, you know in their uh, takes and all the taking and all that all that but when it comes to commercial cinema you know it's a different uh, language it's a different ball game altogether he had that marvelous uh, ability with the camera and uh, that was something that he did overdid if i may say so when he made his own film reshma shera uh, which unfortunately didn't work out too well and finally he shot what he could uh, which was neither here nor there but it could have been if left to himself it could have been a really good film by then bone show had happened it done well and basu chatterjee sara akash had done well you know and the, the more people are looking forward to a different kind of cinema and in that sense i think uh, there are a lot of expectations like someone like sukdev would come into the uh, mainstream and give it a different orientation i don't know how disappointed he was he must have been because certainly he um i think his um, drinking buddies uh, were were increasing by the day <laughs> and, which was a misfortune because uh, it didn't do him any good I want to make films about love, about freedom, about anything. I want to make a film about Nina and Mari. Why? That stupid woman died drinking whiskey, and I don't want to die of drinking whiskey. Right? I want to die being a thing. One day, at twelve o'clock. शाम बैनी गल साहब के घर पे चले गए मुँह में बड़ी ऑकवर्ड फील किया उनको जगाया घंटिया में जा कर खुल के आ गए अब सोए हुए उठ के आए मैं कहा सॉरी कहते नहीं नहीं कोई बात नहीं अंदर आए तो दो मिनट के बाद मैं आ सकता हूँ कहीं उसके बाद चले गए क्यों किया ऐसे आप ऐसे ऐसे ही करते थे उनका मन में कुछ फर्क पता नहीं क्या था हमेशा लोनली थे लाइफ में लेटर में भी लोनली राज लोनली शुरू से रोज किसी न किसी का पर और मैं इंतजाम करती थी चीज़ें ला तो क्यों मनाते थे मतलब बदे बस मनाते थे उनका मन था वो किसी ने पूछा उनसे कि भैया किसका बर्थडे है कैसे तुम्हारा कल मनाते थे ये तेरा बर्थडे हो वो पोठे पे डांस तुम देखना मैंने कहा मैंने नहीं वहाँ जाना कैसे चलो 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 जबरदस्ती ले गए ले गए ये श्यामा भाई है फालतू सी और औरत ये श्यामा भाई है 
यही डांस करती है मैं जरा परेशान होता हूँ तो इधर आके बैठ के इसका डांस गाना सुनता हूँ मैं चुप मैं बोलती नहीं इससे ज़्यादा कोई गुस्सा ही ना आ जाए तो ये लेके वापस आ किसी को पता लगा वो बड़े हैरान हो ऐसी जगह पे लेके जाते वाइफ को तो वो बहुत अच्छा गाना गाती थी ये बोला था ना गाना भी नहीं अच्छा गाती थी उन्हें गा के सुनाया था Some are traditional singing and dancing girls, but there are areas where, under this garb, the world's oldest profession continues to flourish. And sometimes, behind these scenes of glamour and glitter, somebody is trading in human flesh. There was some shooting we were doing near this uh, other red light area called Pilaos. He stopped the car. Don't take tripod. Just take the camera. Come. On. It was a horror joint. Yeah. Ishan got it. I said, "So where you go? We are shooting." He said, "I don't want to be part of it." He left. I said, "Go on, lighting, go on, shoot." And he was, you know, sitting with this lady, you know, lying down. On there was a little bench, putting his head on her shoulder, lap. I said, "Bye, Jan. Let it go." The magazine ran out. The camera was in my hand. What he did, I don't know. At that time, there were no permit rooms in Bombay. So if you wanted to have a drink, either you went to an auntie's or you went to a place where there was some sort of a entertainment, like uh, a mujra. I remember when we were sitting at Shamas, and um, they said Sukhdev has come. So we said, "Oh, we'd love to meet this guy. Bring him in." And we sat down with him. We offered him a drink. He was he had absolutely down to earth, same level as us. And he was actually a giant in those days. I mean, everybody used to say Sukhdev's documentaries, Sukhdev's ads, and he was always full of fun. You know, joking around, talking around. He was never annoyed, or, or you know, he never loses temper. He was that cool. And I always used to tell him, "You know, the house is like this." Violent, but it was from the beginning. सक्सेस मिलनी शुरू हुई ना तब से वाले मैं बोलने बंद करती थी बोलती नहीं थी तो मैं बोलती नहीं थी तो कहते थे मुझे बाल में तो नाराज है इसलिए बात नहीं कर रही मैं बाहर खाना देती थी तू देना नहीं चाहती मैं कहने में देना चाहती कुछ कोई गात वायलेट हो जाते हर तस्वीर में एक कहानी कई इस बस वो उठ के माफिया मांगते थे कहते मैंने क्या कहा था तुमको मैं क्या तो अपने इतनी गाली गाली मैं मुंह से नहीं बोल सकती कहते अब सॉरी आई एम सॉरी बहुत माफिया बहुत मांगते थे पाँव पड़ जाते थे तो मैं क्या समझूं कहते मैं अपनी फ्रस्ट्रेशन तुम्हारे पे निकाल मैं क्या मेरे पे निकाल के क्या मिलेगा पर काय की क्योंकि मैं आपको बहुत सब जाकर कहते हैं काम लेने के लिए क्या क्या करना पड़ता है ये I'll never forget the day you took this shot. You called me inside and without warning slapped me. If I hadn't shocked you, I would never have got that expression on your face. And you got a perfect propaganda film against violence through violent means. How honest is that? There was such a vast difference between what you believed in and the way you behaved at home. Couldn't you see that? Yes, I could. But that's not the only truth, Chutki. It's never so simple. People say the work you did is far more important than our personal lives. My mother may believe that, but I'm not so sure. 
ये वोट ले रहे हैं ये पद्म श्री मिला था तब की ये प्रीमियर क्या था कोई फिल्म का अपनी डॉक्यूमेंट्री का नाइन मंथ टू फिर नाइन मंथ टू फिर आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू फॉर पेटनाइजिंग ए डॉक्यूमेंट्री शो इन ए कमर्शियल थिएटर इन आर कंट्री देर आर मेनी न्यू थिंग्स हैपनिंग and uh, i think uh, this is one of them that the documentary film is going to find its own place and not get lost in this huge hindi glosses and uh, chaps like me who have made this film my name is rukdev we intend to create this revolution in mass media in order to uh, well what is called i uh, still haven't understood the word socialism but i suppose we are getting somewhere I think my film in my very humble capacity is a small single effort uh, towards the direction where we should end all of all wars just before the formation of bangladesh we were sitting there talking about the situation of 7 million refugees that come in from east pakistan and i said i was going to write what's called a poster play in hindi urdu sort of thing you know very quickly overnight in fact at sukh's place he said is that all is that all he sort of banged me on my leg said, is that all you can do i said so that i am a writer damn it i'm not he said why aren't you and i going there to fight for uh, for for the people they're being massacred they're being shot these intellectuals are being lined up and shot the professors of the university haven't you i said yeah i am aware of it but i am not a trained soldier i'm not a fighter but of course as you know uh he went uh to what was his pakistan and he made a film my voice is on that film nine months to freedom in dhaka itself a bomb had been exploded in the intercontinental hotel the pakistan army was being harassed on all sides they moved only in strong groups and the price they exacted for the sheltering of a gorilla was heavy scores of villages were burned and unarmed civilians butchered at the slightest suspicion no one could guess what the outcome would be once the monsoon was over i was very fortunate to go with him and see what he was doing and the type of coverage he did it was something fantastic kisi ne uske bare mein socha bhi nahi tha all skulls lying in front of the house and uh, just somebody is sitting and watching there sukhdev had taken that shot and that impact of that shot was something horrible mane whole war ke koi uske bare mein description dene ki koi zarurat nahi commentary dene ki koi zarurat nahi music high high up karke dene ki koi zarurat nahi the visuals he had a neck That was the first time you left us for a very long time. I never missed you though. In fact, was quite relieved. Your circle of concern was larger than your family. That may be so. But what did you really gain from filming a war papa? A heart attack, my love. And I was very very sad for a long long time. When you returned, 
we saw a whole lot of animation films in your room on a 16mm projector. Laurel and Hardy, Tom and Jerry. And Chaplin. Yes, Chaplin. Your friends say you were like him. Sad and happy. The film was first released in Delhi in Shilla Theatre, then in Eros. That was for a first a documentary film released and people actually went to see the film. That I think also helped him get over his depression. A month or two after that, like he was back to his normal ways. कभी भी कुछ भी करते कुछ भी बोल देगा कुछ भी करेगा इट डिड नॉट मैटर वेदर इट इज अ कॉमन मैन ऑन द स्ट्रीट हाउ इज डूइंग द क्रेजीएस्ट थिंग विथ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज मिसेस इंदिरा गांधी ही वाज शूटिंग ऑन इंटरव्यू एंड ही टोल्ड मिसेस गांधी ये हिंदू बेबी यू गॉट अ टेरिबल कलेक्शन ऑफ साड़ीज यार लेट्स गो ए कैमरा वाला बंद करो लेट्स गो वे लेट्स गो टू खादी बंदर एंड गेट सम डीसेंट साड़ीज फॉर यू He says, "No, no, so I can't go there. Then get the khadi bandar here." So they were all sitting, having chai, nasta at the prime minister's expense, <laughs> while the collection is brought in. Then he selected one sari. Said, "Okay, Hindu baby, you wear this." On the 16th of April, I read a news item that said there is going to be an All India Railway strike. I got a little worried. We decided to take our cameras out to the people. and ask them a few questions we are going to follow some 150 milkmen who carry milk to the city of bombay if there is a railway strike and this lifeline is disrupted about 500 families are in the danger of risking their livelihood and perhaps you may not get your bottle of milk in bombay <laughs> तो राशन नहीं मिलेगा राकेल नहीं मिलेगा कुछ शक्कर नहीं मिलेगा गहू नहीं मिलेगा तो सब पंचायत हो जाएगी आपने ये भी सुना होगा कि रेलवे की स्ट्राइक होने वाली है भगवान सब अच्छा करेगा इसमें उस सत करतार मेरा पार हो जाएगा लेकिन क्या ये भगवान के कहने से रेलवे की स्ट्राइक बंद हो जाएगी भगवान को बड़ी ताकत है रेलवे स्ट्राइक बंद करा देगा करा दे। आपके दुख सब ठीक हो जाएंगे सब ठीक हो जाएंगे हाँ साहब अगर रेलवे स्ट्राइक भगवान के कहने से बंद हो जाए तो इस मुल्क का अल्लाह ही मालिक है ड्राइवर साहब आपने सुना होगा की रेलवे की स्ट्राइक होने वाली है I'm doing a film on the emergency, and I'd like to interview you. So I said, "Look, so you know where I stand on the emergency, and uh, 
it's pointless talking to me. It's pointless talking to me because even if you do record my interview, not a line of it would be passed by the censors. And he said, look, that's my job, it's not your job. It's obviously very difficult to generalize, you know, what um, the reactions of people in Delhi have been to the emergency. Because uh, as a journalist... And uh, under I, the, the signboard of the Press Club of India, uh, we did this interview. Uh, the film was screened. I remember I was there for the screening. And uh, it met with very hostile criticism. Because the mood in the intelligentsia in Delhi at that time was extremely hostile to the emergency regime. All right. And he was, he was very upset. Uh, he was interviewed uh, in the following days about the film where he explained time and again that no politically sensitive person could support the emergency. But if there were aspects to it, and he was referring really to Indira Gandhi's 20-point program, uh, he said, this is what I'd like to communicate. I hate to be a propagandist for any government. I think, again, in, in a classic Sukhdev way, which is to negotiate with the state, he, he, he thought that this was, this was a, a very interesting moment, a historical moment, where he could subvert and introduce his own framework. So if you look at his film, they are constantly talking about the well-being of the state. This is very important. They're not talking about justifying a certain draconian measure. They're talking about the well-being of the state. But I think there's a misplaced sense of politics. The one that held my attention was after the silence. That was uh, shot immediately after the emergency, as the emergency collapsed, so to speak. Was that it looked at the land grab and the struggle by these very poor peasants and tribals to get back their land. I'm told there was one shot where uh, Sukhdev um, collaborator sat on a motorbike with the motorbike on while Sukhdev took shots and ran. Because you did have private landlord armies. You had people who would kill and not think anything about it. So 15 years later, I was in Palamu and I decided to revisit these different spots. And so in a sense that uh, documentary actually inspired the story that followed, which you'll find in my book. The story is called After the Second Silence. But there were filmmakers and documentary makers and others who, for whatever, I mean, who, who did believe, like some bureaucrats believed, that they could do some good within the framework of the emergency. That illusion was shattered very fast. That illusion was shattered very fast. And then, of course, you then spend a lot of, I mean, those who did that spent a lot of time regretting it. He decided to make a film on family planning. We virtually lived in Delhi for a year. I mean, you can imagine that cost. Then suddenly when the film is completed, those for whom he was making were not interested. They were interested in something else, and I will tell. You keep or you don't keep, I don't mind. They wanted the film to be dedicated to Sanjay Gandhi. So Bhai then said, oh, mar gaya kya? And after emergency was lifted, the new government came to power. And next three years, we never got a film from government, any of the government departments. We did film for BHGL, HMT, BML, you know, the huge corporates, but anything from the government, no. So they was kind of blacklisted as far as IBM ministry is concerned, directly. They really thought that he was part of Indira Gandhi's inner circle, all right, which I think he was not, all right. He, she liked his work and he, as I said, was extremely in awe of her.
But to believe that you know he was a part of the inner circle and all that, that's, that's rubbish. And uh, also, you know, friends became estranged from him. There was this, uh, perhaps the last time I met him, uh, I told myself that Sukh has to deal now only with one thing, his solitude. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the future of the documentary film, I think it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's rather bright in a way that uh, <laughs> we'll keep on making money and we'll keep on making more ad film kind of documentary films and we'll keep on singing songs and documentary films. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let me be very frank, the last two years of his life, financially he was in a very bad shape. There was a setup to be carried out, X number of people to be paid, there are laboratory bills to be taken care of. Yes, they were being taken off, but not the way it should have been taken care of. So that pushed him into further depression, further depression. He may be laughing, talking, but he's not himself today. Somewhere down the line, there is a track going on, which is not to the present situation or present time. Both sensitive the, both is other sensitive. Unko yehi frustration ho gayi ke dunya wo log achhe kyun nahi hai? Kahi logon ke liye wo galat karte the, unko wo gussa jarda tha, wo sharab pi lete the. To strength kam hoti gayi. Aisa se bade weak ho gaye the wo. काम करने के लिए लोगों को घर पे बुलाते थे एडिटिंग करने के लिए बाद में कैंसर कर देते थे हालत बहुत खराब हुई मगर अपनी वो ईगो जो होती है ना वो नहीं छोड़ी नहीं मुझे शूटिंग पे जाना मैं बीमार हूं कोई बात नहीं मुझे वो करना है मुझे ये करना है पर वो सब कुछ बीच में ही रह गया ही केम 10:00 11:00 के वो ही रात थी मगर वो फेल्ट हेट लगाए हुए हम लगाए हुए हम लोग बात किए इन ऑल दिस थिंग फिर गाड़ी में बैठे और वो गाड़ी चली सीधे से तब मुझे बिल्कुल लगा के दिस इज द लास्ट मीटिंग आवर दैट नाइट आई हैड दिस फीलिंग के आई एम नॉट मीटिंग हिम अगेन और बाद में ये हुआ कि हम खैर बर्लिन चले गए इन ऑल दिस थिंग और मेरा मेरे छोटे भाई ने सिर्फ एक लाइन लिखी या और उसने कहा कि सुख जो दुख के साथ था वो भी नहीं रहा एंड वी ऑल लिफ्ट फॉर दिल्ली ही वाज मिक्सिंग सम डॉक्यूमेंट्री ओवर देयर एंड दे फिनिश मिक्सिंग वन विल and mr madhok is the uh, sound record is there he turn around to you know do some cabling or something when he turn back and he saw bhajan falling has already fallen down on the mixer he just he oh. yes, as he told him man he is a senior person he knew what has happened immediately the there was a matador van in the in the cet complex itself the driver was called driven down is hardly a maybe not even one and a half or 2 km at the most from cet to uh, all india institute in delhi he took him there and they declared him dead on arrival so he did died walking like he always wanted yeah he always said he always said beta hum to kaam karte karte marunga you know he always used to say that main to kaam karte karte marunga and that's exactly how he was. and you had called me in bombay i called you yes But then you told me, "Baba, to mar gaya, main aake kya karu?" That was, I mean, it's sad, but you know, I mean, I don't blame you for that. 
what you knew of your father, how you were feeling towards him, is totally a different thing. You know, it's only you and you alone. You know. My dear Nikki, when the time began, you came and I love you. Time cannot stop. I and I I cannot stop loving you. I am stupid. You are love. <laughs> My Nikki, I love you. I wait for you and wait for you. Love runs. What? What you can look at? So, you can look at it. So, you can look at it. You can look at it. You can look at it. You Plain A great silence had trapped the heart like the bird in a cage. People asked questions, made of sympathy or spite. Who was to be the judge and who the accused? The wilderness burst like a mad twilight. Nothing had really changed. Only time had different names. <laughs> How can I hide the seers of my conscience? What a challenge. A plain view. I have not seen this before. I have not seen it before. This is the beginning. As a child, I judged his love, or lack of it. Today, through his third eye, I feel him close to my heart. He is now more alive than he ever was. My first 14 years have found new meaning. As I listen to his music, I now understand. I thought you had never touched my life. But I was wrong, Papa. I searched for you and I found who I really am. I didn't say my last goodbyes to you then. But now I am ready. I'm in Bangladesh and it feels like I'm coming to meet you finally. Shukhadev Singh Santhu, film director and photographer India. In 1972, he released his documentary titled Nine Months to Freedom, the Story of Bangladesh. This documentary is considered one of the great artistic works on the liberation war. For his remarkable support and contribution to the liberation war of Bangladesh, Sri Shukhadev Singh Santhu is awarded Friends to Liberation War Honor posthumous.
I'm making a documentary on him and um, today I feel so proud that I can be here. And now I realize his pain, you know, when he was here, what he went through. He really felt he needed to do something about it. And I mean, if he could help it, he would just stop it all. But the only tool he had was his camera. So he tried to do it through his film. But I don't think my father at that time, um, which of course I've learned from his friends, um, realized the gravity of the situation. When he jumped into something, it was purely out of passion, out of an impulse, which pushed him forward, you know, to do what he did. He never thought of consequences, you know. I, and I know this only from stories because uh, I really was never too close to him simply because I was afraid of him, I was in awe of him. Um, I wasn't allowed to get too close to him also because of his alcoholism. So there were a lot of things involved. I can talk about it now, um, but in those growing years were very, very hard on me. My little son who just has heard about his uh, grandfather, he has so many questions and when he asks me those questions, I'm not able to answer most of them, you know. Um, he says, what was your father like and uh, what did you do with him together? What games did you play together? You know, what books did you read together? And I have no answers. So yeah, it is a difficult journey, but um, uh, the focus is definitely the documentary movement and the role Sukhdev played in that and how I discover him through that journey. That's the film.